Ah, internet. We meet again. Hi there. It's Domestioshi, and I'm here again to talk about the Venture Brothers season finale. Or finale, whichever you'd like to call it. My topics I'd like to discuss. I just want to highlight 2 ton 21's um, rise in ranks this season. How my favorite character has returned. 24. Returned, also. That's what we need to talk about. Did he return, or did he not? We saw him, but was it really him? More on that later. The third one, or 21, his relationship with Brock. And a little bit on Brock himself. Alright, so again, I would like to highlight 21 first, because he totally deserves it. I love how Doc and Jackson just completely... He's still 21 on the inside. He's still 21. His walls come down whenever he's talking to 24 Skull, and he's just the the chubby, nerdy, pop culture referencing little virgin most likely he is. And it's so sweet. It's so sweet. But, you know, on the outside, when we first saw in the Return to Malice episode when he was talking to 86 and 87, who I am so glad did not replace 21 and 24, because I'm pretty sure the masses would be very angry, as would I. Anyway, he was talking to 87, 86 now, I, I guess. That's your number, scrub. I'm a henchman 86. You're 87 now. <laughs> oh, he's like, you got 15 minutes. Put on your makeup, fix your hair. Oh, it's so weird to see him in command, yet so satisfying. Am I the only one who... Also how he introduces himself. Pogo Pogo is a plesiosaur. A fucking plesiosaur. Plesiosaur! Anyway, um, uh, right. My next topic is on 24, his return or not return. Around the adult swim boards, there's been a lot of talk about, is 24 really there or not? In the episode Return to Malice, at the very end, everyone got excited when there was the hand check. Oh my god, who checked off the list because 21 wasn't in the room? And who moved 24 Skull? Is he a ghost? Well, anyway, we found out it was indeed 24 was in this episode, and that most likely he was a ghost because he said so. But what I don't understand is if he did move his head and take that pencil and like write or and mark off the little list with it, you know, 21's revenge list. Why in the season finale did he was like, I'm not a poltergeist, I can't move stuff. I I'll believe that, you're a ghost. But Lincoln was a ghost, uh, look who's coming to state dinner, I think was the episode. And he was able to move objects that bared his own image. 24 can move his skull. It's essentially his image, or at least his bone structure. It's him. But the pencil? Was it like a 24B pencil? Did the eraser like have the shape of his head on there or something? I didn't see that. I don't know. I don't think so. So I think something weird is happening with that. I'm sure Doc and Jackson wouldn't just leave that and trade. The idea that's come of this on the boards is that 21's really imagining 24's there, that he's in denial. And what I mean by in denial is like, you know, spiraling denial. In the episode, at the end, the camera keeps shaking. In the end of the episode, well not the end, when 21 has to go and deactivate the security at the Venture Compound, 24 is 21 is all like, oh, come on, you help me all the time. 24 is just like, do I? Or do I only make you feel secure enough to trust your own intuition? And that's when 21 just flat out panics, it seems. And he's just like, no, you're real, you're real. It's a pretty loud outburst. If you say so. <laughs> he was breathing heavily without 24. Like I said before, he's his, he's his best friend, his, his running mate, and 
gosh, I can only imagine the pain. So, of course, I'd understand, like, no, you're real, you're real. Don't scare me like that ever again, you're real. But still, if, I don't know, 24 could just be a product of 21's insanity. And I use that term very, very, very lightly. Moving on, though. 21 and Brock, or wait, wait, wait. 21 and Brock. Oh, see what I did there? Da 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 da. Camera keeps moving. Okay, so 21 and Brock. I really appreciate how 21 held his own, you know, against Brock, but still managed to lose, showing that Brock is still the almighty, he can never lose figure. And how he joined up with them at the end to take down Monstroso, but he was all Jedi. 21 never seemed like a villain to me. Granted, none of the henchmen are villains. They're just, like, there. I know they work for the monarch, and he's a villain. My men playing a plastic baby guitar all day. That's what they do. And if Guitar Hero, Rock Band, whatever they seem to be playing is evil, well then, so be it. 21 just never seemed like a bad guy to me. And the role of a Jedi definitely fits his character. <laughs> and just teaming up with Brock like that, it's... I don't know. I'm wondering if they'll uh, team up in the future. Of course, those really fake black sideburns he was sporting. I wasn't really into that. But I could still appreciate it. I, it was still great to me. List of things to say is Brock's return. Everyone's happy. All the Brock Tars are like, oh my God, he's back! Finally, we understand more about Sphinx. I was in the dark. We all were. Most of us. People who were smarter than me. Anyway, <laughs> Brock's back. I like what they did at the end of the episode. How, you know, Brock finally came back to Hank. It's like, good night, Hank. Oh, good night, Brock. <laughs> Brock! <laughs> it was so cute. What I'm really curious about is hatred. Is he going to move? Are they going to have like two bodyguards now? Like, I know a lot of people hate Sergeant Hatred. I, I don't really hate him. Yeah, I, I think he's funny, but I, I don't know what's gonna happen to him. I'm wondering if they'll like push him off a cliff for the public's sake. Jackson's journal. That, in um, halfway through the season, the second part of like the Orb episode, the conclusion of that, it was uh, you have to forgive me. It, the season's kind of new. I, I haven't. Well, it's not. I haven't had time to memorize all the episode names. Just my favorites. He had mentioned in his journal, if you don't like hatred now, you'll never like the big lug. And... I, I like hatred. Anyway, what was I saying? Right, right. Well, where's hatred gonna go now? He only appeared in the last episode for, like, to tell. He seemed a little lame to me. He was just there to kind of push the plot forward. Mostly. Except for that, like, Nigerian prince quip. It seemed like he was just there to question what Dr. Venture was doing so he could tell the audience, Oh, Monstroso's bombarding me. I have to do something charitable. Just like the way he said it, too. What are we gonna do? It was very lame. And it was an obvious push towards the plot. That was, like, the only thing I didn't like about the episode. That Just, just that one line. It was way too... It just didn't sound like hatred, but, well, it sounded like it, you know what I mean, you know what I mean. But, yeah. Mm, Alright, kitties, that was, uh, that was my opinion on all this stuff. I hope you enjoyed this little, uh, venture talk, and I cannot wait to the new season. New season. And if any of you are wondering... Yes, that is a Kingdom Hearts poster. Yes, that is Princess Peach. And yes, this is a star. I'm Damasti Yoshi, and uh, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully more to come. You guys keep commenting. Later.